great to have the fan together, right? So yes. we got to cherish these moments, cherish these moments. Anyway, let's continue. I'll just start from the beginning. Why not? There's a lot to discuss. I didn't see the full interview. Thank God CJ put uh, clips on Twitter. So I just saw a few that you put on there. So I'm this is the first time I'm seeing it. So it should be very interesting. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Cornell West. Oh, thank you, my dear brother. I, I think about you, I think of George Carlin. You know, the Union Seminary is right across the street from George Carlin Place. Oh, uh, really? No kidding. What a grand genius. He grew up on 121st and Broadway next to Corpus Christi Church, and they got a beautiful sign saluting him. And uh, beside Richard Pryor, he's got to be one of the greatest comic genius of the last 50 years, my brother. Well, I certainly wish he was still alive right now because I know he would see through all the propaganda that we've been living through, at least since 2015. But I want to just before we start, I want to uh, get this out there because uh, some people misunderstood my coverage of your parents with Anderson Cooper and they took it as an attack on you when I was merely helping, uh, trying to help you get the message right about the Ukraine war. Because as a radical, part of your job is to educate people on what's actually happening. And you have to be crystal clear in explaining it to people, especially about what's happening in Ukraine. So people took that as me trying to attack you when I was I was doing it more as a coach, trying to uh, help you and get it right. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this interview also, because I was thrilled to hear that you're running third party. You got more courage than I do to do it. You're a better man than me. And uh, so I mean, I appreciate you doing it because you're getting the message out there about the Ukraine war, about the two party duopoly. This is really important. And show in the beginning. So so if uh, I just want to tell people, so if it seems like I'm being critical of Cornell West from here going forward to the election, what it is going to be is me trying to help make his message even better than it is because I think it's really important that his message get out there. That's what this is about. I think that's okay. um, so anyway, I just wanted to clear that up. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I think the important thing always is about is that, you know, we, we, the anthem of black folk is lift every voice, not lift every echo. You got a voice, I've got a voice. Our voices overlap, our voices can have tension, our voices can conflict, we can learn from one another. We proceed, we've got a similar critique of the predatory capitalist society, we've got similar critique of a whole host of issues and certain things we disagree with. Well, that's understandable too. I'm learning from you, you're learning from me. But it's the respect more than anything else that, that's crucial here. And I think I appreciate you starting off with that kind of a reflection, my brother, very much so. So now people make a big deal out of the fact that you endorsed Joe Biden in 2020 and now you're running against him. And the reason you, well, what, what was the reason you endorsed him in 2020 and what has changed since? Yeah, one, I was thoroughly convinced that we needed an anti-fascist coalition and that included the kind of milk toast warmongering neoliberals like Biden. And now it's fairly clear Biden had four years. He had four years to steal the thunder from any kind of Trump challenge four years to try to speak to the needs of poor and working people, four years to try to cut back on the military adventurism. That's been characteristic of his whole career. And it's clear to me now that if the only opposition to the escalating neo-fascism in the country is going to be Biden, 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 or biden like, then the fascism is coming anyway. We're going to have to have alternative vision, alternative institutions, alternative infrastructure. It has an alternative passion. And so if all we can do is produce democratic administrations that are caretakers, postponers of the Trump or Trump-like candidates, then the fascism is coming anyway. The only way you really get at the roots of fascism is to break from the corporate duopoly, to show how the two-party system is an impediment for the unleashing not only of American democracy, but also trying to dismantle the empire in terms of the 800 military units around the world and the military budget taking 57 cents for every dollar. And so in that sense, there's been a shift. There's no doubt about that. Now keep in mind, you know, I supported Ralph Nader and Jill Stein. And in between, I I had early supported Bill Bradley and I, I, I had supported John Kerry as a kind of a, uh, anti, anti right wing coalition too. So that my jazz like activity certainly can be characterized at times with a certain kind of inconsistency, but it's the timing of it. It's the, 
Now, I want you guys to reflect on the answer. Uh, I was just going to pause there. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I want you guys to reflect on the answer. I'll pass through pound because, CJ, I know you want to chime in. But that uh, says a lot that Dr. Cornell West admit that he was inconsistent because that is why I had a lot of respect for Dr. Cornell West because I knew he was a native voter. He voted for uh, Joe Stein. He was an uh, early Obama supporter in 2008, but a lot of people fell for Obama, and then he immediately became an Obama critic, and he supported yeah. the Joe Stein administration. That is why it was deeply disappointing to see that uh, Dr. Cornell West didn't play the lesser two evils game because he should have known better. But at the same time, it's good that he reflect from that, and your answer should be straight up, I was wrong, and I learned better. Now, where I am confused is how do you take that answer, which was good, explaining how Biden is going, going to lead to fascism, to you apologizing and pretending that Biden is not on the same level as Trump later, because those two views should coincide. But I was, I was, I was saving that thought for a little bit later. In the interview, I passed to the panel. CJ, anyone else who want to chime in before we continue? Yeah, when when he's saying um, this is something maybe I don't know of, and I always reach out to Nick uh, when I say, hey, is this is what really liberals are saying or even conservative, if, if any of you know. Is this something, is, is Cornel West's credibility in question? Because this is something I've never heard of because of he, what he said in 2020. Is, is that... Um, because we we've said and we've acknowledged, yeah, he has supported it. Um, and, I, you know, we've said things like he supported it. But of course, he didn't go out and campaign it, campaign for it. It's, you know, I first I, remember, CJ, my first interview, I don't mean to interrupt you, I'll pass right back to you. Huh? But the first interview I did with Dr. Cornell West is when I addressed that. Mm-hmm. That's where that's why the frustration is kicking in. Uh, because we had the lesser two conversations. How many times now? If you guys look at the very first time we ever had Dr. Cornel West on, we talk about him endorsing Biden. He said that was a mistake. And then I clicked out like, thank God, thank God, because this is a guy I had a respect for because he was a Joe Stein voter. Because but he I didn't think, vote. But go ahead, go ahead, Sabi, go ahead. Go ahead. But I think, I, I think we should be fair across the board because RFK also supported Joe Biden. Absolutely. Absolutely. He has said multiple times in interviews that he's friends with Joe Biden and his family. Absolutely. And he has also said he's not going to run a mean spirited campaign against Joe Biden. And he's running in the Democratic Party. So I think the thing is, is just we have to make sure that we're being fair. So the people who are because some people are criticizing Cornell West for endorsing Joe Biden in 2020. Some of those same people, not all of them, but some of those same people are supporting RFK Jr., who also. Yes. You know, supported Cornell, what uh, supported uh, Joe Biden. So, what and what's the Zionist. Yeah, absolutely. Zionist. those I want, are I want people, uh, sorry, those are CJ. people I, giving away, sorry, they're giving away, uh, Sabi. Those are people who are giving away that that policy is not their core concern. You get what I'm saying? That's 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 the same thing as saying, I, I have an issue, I want Medicare for all, but I voted for Joe Biden. It, it makes <laughs> no sense. So do you really want Medicare for all? Is that really your priority? You get what I'm saying? So it so if if you can if you don't have the same critique or pushback that you have for Cornell West, that you, you don't have that for RFK, that's telling in itself, in my opinion, and whoever yeah. else wanted to chime in. Yeah. And, and remember in our debate with uh my debate with Pasta, he got upset because I called RFK Jr. support or cultist, but if you have if you're an RFK Jr. supporter and you criticize Dr. Cornell West for being too weak on Democrats, you're a cultist because RFK Jr. said in a recent interview, we we literally clipped it. He said he's a Democrat to his core. You guys know when RFK Jr. is going to stop fighting? He's going to stop fighting around Super Tuesday. Yeah. Dr. Cornell West is in the general election. Repeat after me, fam. The general election. There's one of them is going to quit early, and we know which one it is. And he's yeah. bullshitting I, I, you right now, but he's going to endorse Biden. But go ahead, Ron. Sorry, I have to cut you off earlier. Go ahead, Ron. I, I remember uh, your first interview with Dr. Cornell West, and, you know, back then, I was a little – I was shaky on him, too. I, I still am today because of his inconsistency, you know, because uh, uh, he was one of the reasons why I actually woke up to what Barack Obama was doing, you know, and uh, he was – Calling them out, calling calling them all type of names you would never think Cornel would, would come out of Cornel West's mouth, right? And it really turned me off with the uh, 
with the Biden uh, uh, endorsement. Yes, it, it turns me off. It turned me the hell off. But I'm glad to see that he's man enough to uh, own up to his, uh, to his failures and try to make it better, try to do something better for the people. So instead of, hey, I know I fucked up with Joe Biden, but here's a better candidate. Like, no, if you want the job done, you do it what? You do it your damn self, right? So he see that you can't get uh, uh, you can't get anywhere with the Democrats. So to start your own party, and that's, or uh, uh, do it through a third party, and that's what I respect more than anything. You know, you have the boss to actually go against the grain this time. You know, and knowing that the uh, the warmongers and war criminals that's uh, that probably on his head right now. You know, it, it shows uh, it, sh it shows strength. It really does, especially in these days. All right, let's continue for a second, Tom. And then uh, after the next segment, we pause it out. We let play a full segment play, and then we get our thoughts afterwards. Each moment has its own context. So now uh, our friend Nick Cruz says that many climate activists have no yeah, idea, that guy? <laughs> idea how much they destroyed all their credibility by endorsing and supporting Joe Biden, the Nord Stream pipeline bomber, and the largest eco-terrorist in modern human history. For president, why should anyone take climate or environmental issues seriously when you obviously do not? Now, do you what, what do you say back to that? That guy made some great points. <laughs> Just saying, that guy made some fantastic points. And this is why we've been wanting Dr. Corno West to escalate his rhetoric against the Democratic Party. Unlike uh, uh, unlike Trump supporters and duopolists, because we are post duopolists. There are duopolists who believe this moron Trump is an anti-establishment fighter, even though he hired John Bolton, and Mike Pompeo and others. We look at him as a clown. We look at him as a clown, but we we call him out. But we say that Dr. Cornel West should use that same anger for him. That's what he's bringing up here. So let me let it continue. That kind of critique that you it, by endorsing him, you lose your credibility. Well, it, it, it becomes I mean, I think, you know, I've, I've been on my dear brother's show a, a number of times. And uh, I think there's always a certain force in the argument of trying to be consistently third party across the board, having no relation whatsoever to the bourgeois politicians. I think there's force to that. But I think the credibility that one has really is it is holistic. It's 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 wholesale rather than just retail, and and the credibility that you have in regard to being consistently against war, consistently against capital, consistently against white supremacy, even if it has different kind of stances from one election to the next, that would be one of the ways in which I would try to respond to that. Uh, uh, that would be the beginning of a response to that. Okay. Here's an, another Again, a critique I have. He about to show no one on my tweets, but uh, I don't know why all that was necessary because in that answer, you can say, yeah, Joe Biden is an eco terrorist and no one on the left should ever endorse him. So I don't know what the fuck he's going on about. You're running so against let, Joe Biden, Dr. West. But sorry, go let, ahead. let me let me interject yeah, here. I, I could ahead. have interject yeah. this part later, but it's, it's a good moment since, with your comment there. And that is, I, I believe what we're seeing or what we are identifying in Cornell West is that, remember, he made a calculation that fascism is coming and we need to form a call and I need to team with these people over here I wouldn't normally team with to fight fascism. Just because he believes there needs to be a different strategy to fight that same fight doesn't mean he doesn't still believe the calculation, the formula that brought him to his conclusion in 2020. So he still thinks, he still thinks, and you hear it in what he's saying and the distinctions that he's making, he still thinks that Trump is the bigger threat. He still thinks that in what he's saying, go ahead, Savvy, you were gonna chime in. I think that instead of, because this is something I know we all had this conversation with Dr. West. I told him too, like mm -hmm. when I interviewed him on my show, I explained to him how both of them, both of them are fascists. And I gave different examples about like how Trump was more overt, but Biden was more covert. But Biden did some of these same things via legislation and also some of the people that he supported or he chose to support uh, politically. Right. 
So that is a point where I think we disagree with Cornell West as, as to if they're really that much different. But I think the focus should be corruption. Yeah. At the end of the day, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are both corrupt. And I think that's where the conversation, the discussion really needs to go instead of people arguing over this person is more fascist than this one and that person is more fascist than that one. We need to call out the corruption and both of them are corrupt. And I, I wish that's the direction that it would go to. And I, I, I just want to say, you know, a lot of these people uh, from even from Dr. Cornell West, uh, you know, unfortunately, to uh, a lot of Joe Biden and Democrat base, they do not want to take responsibility for uh, putting the fascists in office. So, you know, if he, if he was to say, oh, well, he's a fascist, he's a fascist, then it, it reflects back to you. You know, it reflects back to you and your endorsement. So a lot of a lot of people try to, you know, uh, uh, bend their ways out of these corners and bend their ways out of these fights in order not to take responsibility for what they have done. But I feel like he he's, I think he feel like, you know, him running is uh, trying to at least uh, right the wrongs that he have done from endorsing Joe Biden and whatnot, but a lot of yeah. people do try to avoid responsibility. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, people, people, people. And I want, I'll, I'll let the video continue after my very short point, but people got to remember that Dr. Cornell West is running in the general election, and I wish she also remembered that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Let me say one and, thing. And, oh, and, my, the and, and the reason I say that is because if you're running against Joe Biden, every question you should turn into a Joe Biden attack. That's why I'm like, I don't know why he even answered the question this way. No matter what they ask you. So when he reads my tweet where I talk about how Joe Biden's a North Stream pipeline bomber, why aren't you expanding on that? You know what I mean? But Every all of them, go ahead, go ahead, Sabby, go ahead, Sabby. All of them are all the candidates are doing this. Have you guys noticed that? Like RFK is yes, doing absolutely. this, Marianne Williamson is doing this. Like you really have to go hard yes. at Joe Biden, especially right now, because Joe Biden is barely standing. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, literally. Huh, Sabby, literally. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I'm gonna let it play a little bit. JB, do you want to one more comment? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, JB. JB, JB and then CJ. Go ahead. JB and then yeah. CJ. Then we let it play for a bit after you guys comment. All right. So one of the things that I think that needs to be honed in on, and I think it is good to think about, is a lot. Some people are thinking they're in their minds. Cornell West is running a Democratic primary. He's not. That means, like Nick said, adequate, you know, very well, is that he's going all the way to the general. I think what I am disappointed in is that Cornell West doesn't see the covert versus overt fascism that Sabi uh, pointed out, and within Biden and Trump, but in reality, they are operating within a fascist system that a lot of people don't talk about. And the fascist system scapegoats and keeps us divided. You want to talk about fascism? Let's talk about the carceral system that disproportionately affects black people. Let's talk about the let's talk about the media system that will disproportionately look at black people as troublesome, right? So the system itself is fascist, and then the agents of the system are just people like. Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And so when we look at it from that lens, then it becomes easier to say, well, yeah, they're both on the same side. Because what is fascism? Fascism is governments and corporations working hand in hand the fuck to you. keep a small group of people in power while also demonizing and scapegoating marginalized groups in order to keep the working <laughs> class divided. And when you have that, you have Joe Biden doing that. You have Donald Trump doing that. You have MSNBC doing that. You have Fox News doing that. You have New York Times, Washington Post, OAN. All of them are doing that, which means that they are all complicit within the fascist elements of a system. And fascism really is just the love child of the white supremacist and racist system that has been birthed. Because remember... Fascism came forth out of, the, out of the idea of how this country treated indigenous Americans and black people. That's where they got their ideas from. And so once we come to terms with their agents of this system and that they're both within uh, participants of it, then that I think is the way to talk about it. But unfortunately, 
I don't think that Dr. West really sees it as that yet. Um, I'm hoping that he can warm up to it, yeah. but I don't know. CJ, do you want to comment one more time? Yeah, uh, so through? listen, because what he's about to go, he's about to start listing what's fascist or not. Listen to what Cornell West lists as when he says, oh, Trump is doing this, this, and this. Listen to what it, he's saying, and you tell me if that's not January 6th, uh, Russia Gate, <laughs> yeah. some of the stuff that that's why I'm saying he is still in the mindset of 2020, even though his strategy is different, his calculation that Trump is worse is still uh, the same. And then another point, if you have fascist elements, because he likes to say that, yeah, he has fascist elements. Isn't that what makes you a fascist? Mm -hmm. That you have elements? So why not yes. just call him fascist? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Little <laughs> element. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> now uh, we, can, we can continue the video. Yeah, let's do the video. Uh, this, is, this is Jimmy showing uh, Dr. West another one of my tweets. So uh, this is Jimmy essentially being like, yeah, I got uh, my homies at RBN. Why don't you sound like them? <laughs> why don't you sound like them people at RBN I've been talking to? <laughs> Because that's the question. Because I, why is he being so? Why is he not using our language? But anyway, that's essentially what he's, he confronted him with. Why don't you sound like other a real opposition to the Democratic Party? Let, let's continue. Tweet from uh, Nick. He says the same professional managerial class gaslighters want us to take it easy on Bernie. They use civility politics as a weapon so they can comfortably sell out. The working class must reject this and start holding these people accountable for selling us out. So Bernie has sold us out and I don't need you to call him a sellout or anything. That's fine. Um, but I do want to see, this is your response because Billy Bernie was asked about your campaign and he said it was, it shouldn't happen and he's against it and he's in board and endorsing right. Bi Biden. And of course that is just garbage. And so this is how you uh, responded. And, and you know, you, even in love, people have deep disagreements about these things. But I think again, he's, He's fearful of the neo-fascism of Trump. So when my my uh, what I would say to you here, and this is a big mm -hmm. point that I, I would try. I'm trying to impress upon you going forward that when sure. you do that, you 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 sound a little bit like Joe Biden. And what you're doing is you're giving a pass to Bernie Sanders and anybody else for voting lesser of two evils. So you're endorsing the Democrats message in their campaign and so now people can dismiss your candidacy and say well we got to worry about the neo-fascism of trump as if joe biden isn't worse which he is he's a bigger fascist and uh he just crushed a union strike on the railroad which is the definition of fascism uh he's now trying to saber rattle with two uh, nuclear powers nuclear war nothing more important than that and what he's doing in Ukraine, you know exactly what he's doing, right? So he's the worst warmonger in the world. 300,000 Ukrainians have already been slaughtered in this proxy war that was provoked by NATO, which you know. So when when do you think that when you say that about when you call Donald Trump a neo-fascist and you don't say that about uh, Joe Biden, how, what do you say when I tell you that you're undercutting your own campaign and you're you are propping up the democratic message, which is that they are the lesser of two evil and you have to f vote for Joe Biden so we don't have fascism. By the way, we already have fascism. As we all know, the fascism is the joining you know, of- The thing is, Jimmy is making arguments to Dr. Cornell West that we all made to him. That's why there's a lot of frustration. Now, at least I have. Because mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of the train wreck that you, got, you guys are gonna see later in this interview could have been avoided if only Dr. West listened to us. To be frank, I, I don't understand why you come out here three times. We explained this. We explained this concept to you three times, and then you gotta go on Jimmy and have him explain that to you in front of fifteen thousand people. Wouldn't it have been better Me, for us? Go ahead, go ahead, CJ. Go ahead. No, what I was gonna say. Um, try explaining this to somebody who believes in Russia Gate. You're gonna have to explain it to him fifteen million times. I'm trying to tell everybody. He is not in the mindset that we are about Trump and Biden. Yeah. He still has the calculation that brought him to the decision to back Biden in 2020. He just decided in 2024, the strategy of getting rid of the scary Trump is not backing Biden. It's running third party. The calculation is still the same. That's why it's reflective in how he speaks. 
because he still I, thinks that. That's what I think. But go ahead, yeah. Savvy. I think somebody's going to chime in. I think it's very important. Anybody challenging Joe Biden at this point in time needs to call out every bad policy decision making uh, position that Joe Biden has had. I think all these things need to be called out, like the mass incarceration, the crime bill, like not even just when Joe Biden was a senator, but even things that happened under Joe Biden's uh, presidency. You got to call out him supporting and approving the Willow Act and claiming to really be this climate you know, protector or whatever. You got to call out Joe Biden supporting these corporations, Joe Biden being corporate. You got to call out everything that Joe Biden has done that is corrupt in this point in time. And this is something where I think all of them, Cornell, Marianne, and RFK Jr., I think all of them are slipping on this point because there's so many things that you can list that Joe Biden has done wrong just in reference to policy. I'm not even talking about the things Joe Biden said in the past, about his kids, other people's kids. I'm talking about all the things that he has done in reference to legislation that has affected people in this country. So I think all of them, they need to call that out. Yeah, I, I honestly think that uh, as far as from the policy standpoint, you need to go scorch earth. Um, because the thing is, is that any type of softness on either uh, Biden or Trump, uh, it can just make people look at you sideways. So as far as uh, what Joe Biden has done and what Trump has done, it's like you need to paint them both as what they really are, war criminals. And I know some people who are Trump supporters, but well, Trump didn't start a war. Yeah, but he continued a bunch of them. So the can thing I is that you have, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to add something about the war part to JB, and I'll pass it back to you about Trump didn't start a war. Yes, Trump did not start a new war, but I also need people to stop saying that Trump did not give weapons yeah. to Ukraine. That is an absolute lie. Donald Trump also gave yeah. weapons to Ukraine and people need to stop telling that lie. No, it hasn't been billions and billions and billions like Joe Biden has been doing, but he was sending them weapons as well. That's he why I'm talking about corruption. Also, to the proxy war in, 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 in to the war in Yemen, uh, he sold wars um, weapons to Saudi Arabia. So, yep. if we're going to talk about be war crimes, you need to say both are guilty of war crimes, and then include people like George W. Bush and Barack Obama in that equation too. Because the thing is, is that they are all guilty. And so, if you're going to position yourself as the alternative. You have to position yourself as the alternative to the entire party, the entire Democrat and entire Republican Party, because they're complicit in war. And that's the thing that he, I think he has to bring home. Yeah, you guys also got to remember, before I continue the clip, uh, Donald Trump also drone strike more people than Barack Obama, the drone strike king. He also expanded on sanctions and tried to overthrow Venezuela and even tried to start an invasion. The only reason why Trump didn't invade Venezuela is because... <laughs> John Bolton and Mike Pompeo stopped him. <laughs> so John Bolton John was like, Bolton. nigga, Trump, you're being too crazy on this one. How can anyone ever take that guy as face value as anti-war? And John Bolton ever, ever outflanked you on any war position. But anyway, let's continue. I don't want to belabor the point. Corporate and government to screw the worker. And that's exactly what Joe Biden, the Democrats, and Pete Buttigieg did. And so they and they will keep doing it and they're not stopping it. And they're they're also for censorship, which is the hallmark of fascism. So this idea Let's that Donald, Donald Trump is more of a fascist than J Joe Biden undermines your own campaign. There's no doubt about that. That's and what so I what I, I would encourage you to thing. stop doing that. What what, what do no, you say I, back? I, I, no, no, we, we, we deeply disagree on that. What? I don't think and this is what I disagree with Nick, too. What? That uh, and I appreciate what? your your advice here, you know, cast in in a respectful way. But we do, and I disagree with Brother Nick on this too. What? That uh, um, the man I just got back from Mississippi. You know that. You know what the Jenkins and Parkins, the two brothers oh, utilized God. by the police, <laughs> there at the church, the Klan oh, still man. running wild. Uh, not just with votes, but terrorizing black folk. The Goon Squad finally got caught by. The, Two lawyers, Brother Malik and Brother Trent. Now, what does that mean? That means that when you talk about fascism, you're talking not just about the rule of big money, not just the rule of rule of big military, uh, not just the rule of corporate power, so that it's oligarchic in essence, but you're also talking about dictatorial rule, no elections, uh, the elimination of dissident voices, 
and then the scapegoating of the most vulnerable. Which is Can you the pause there? So, Dr. West. So I, I mentioned wrong, this. I, I have to chime in because he mentioned I am wrong. I'm wrong. So that what you just look, laid out is exactly what the Democratic Party has done. You want to know who's going after Black socialists, the Uhuru movement, Brother Amali? The Biden administration. Why are you soft on fascism against black people that being waged on the Democratic Party? So how because, am I wrong, Dr. West? Nick, once again, it reflects back on him and all the things that he has done Christ to put these people West. in power. And he cannot, you, you can, you do not want to put yourselves in, in crosshairs in front, in front of bullets that's going back and forth from one battlefield to the next. You can't stand in the middle. So, and, and not only this, you know, uh, sadly, his base is or was democratic. You know, uh, a lot of his followers are Democratic voters and whatnot. And that is his base. That is his base of people uh, 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 as far as, you know, the people who are going to, you know, watch him and uh, read his books and shit like that. And that's why a lot of the people who's uh, who's who, who love Dr. Cornel West hates that he's running thir a third party right now because his base is Democrats. And he know not to cross certain lines because. It will that will really hurt his campaign with, with him trying to at least uh, uh, grab the voters that he could and, and go third party. But, Bur so but Bernie, um, I'm sorry, but Rome, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Rome, I'm sorry, but but Rome, Bernie Sanders crossed all kinds of lines. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders out there smearing Dr. West, AOC, <laughs> and them all cross all kinds of lines to get to get in order and get in line and push back mm -hmm. against any type of third party movement on the outside. There has to be a hardcore break away from the Bernie Sanders campaign, whatever's left of that, yeah. that campaign group. There has to be a hardcore break away from that for anyone that is running third party or independent because those people have crossed the line multiple times yeah. to the point where they are still willing to tell people to vote and simp for Jim Crow Joe, knowing yeah. damn well Joe Biden doesn't approve any of those policies that they're running on. So if they can turn and flip and turn on everybody else that was a part of that Bernie campaign that's willing to do a third party movement we have to flip on them we really have to bring the ruckus against them and so this is something i would encourage dr west you got to call bernie sanders out and i know yes. later on in that breakfast club interview he did say bernie was lying about joe biden's economy doing well but you got to go scorch earth even yes. at your friend Bernie Sanders because yep. Bernie will do it to you i don't yep. trust bernie sanders as far as you can throw him i'm gonna tell you right now yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you guys saw. Uh, uh, anyway, go ahead, go ahead, CJ. We can. Like, no, I was gonna say you, you can do your comment because I was gonna ask you to rewind it twenty seconds, and then I would. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, let's so look, I, I, got, I got a lot to say, but let I let the video continue. I got, yeah, if you can rewind it say, so, like twenty seconds, yeah. and then I'll I'll get my comment. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But once again, this interview would went better if you would have listened to me. I'm just say that. <laughs> Police, there at the church, the Klan still running wild. Uh, not just with votes, but terrorizing black folk. The goon squad finally got caught by the two lawyers, Brother Malik and Brother Trent. Now, what does that mean? That means that when you talk about fascism, you're talking not just about the rule of big money, not just the rule of, rule of big military, uh, not just the rule of corporate power, so that it's oligarchic in essence, but you're oh, also talking about yeah. dictatorial rule. No. So... You hear what he just mentioned, all tangible things that Joe Biden is yes. doing. He lists that to say we're not only talking about this, the things that Joe Biden are doing, but he labels those neoliberal. Now, if you play the second half and then I'll give my second part of the comment. I'm breaking it down like this. If you play the second part now. Oh, elections, uh, the elimination of dissident voices and then the scapegoating of the most vulnerable. Right there, the immigrants, isn't that isn't that workers. what the isn't that what mainstream liberal media is saying mm -hmm. all about joke uh, all about uh Donald Trump? You see what I said? He still has the calculations of what brought him to 2020 to support Joe Biden. He still has that calculation, the stuff he listed, the military industrial complex, and other stuff he listed that applies to Joe Biden. He only sees that as neoliberalism. Not that it's like easier or better, but he sees that as a as neoliberalism. Maybe they're fascistic 
elements, which to me should make you have, give you the ability to say he's a, a, a fascist, but listen to the things he's saying to him is almost like it's not more important. Maybe it is more important, but it seems like he's making it seem like it's more important not changing power. That's not an actual thing that Trump has done. That's something that they're just talking about. You see how he's letting tangible things that Joe Biden does. He's letting that be outdone by ideas that the liberal media has put out there. Him, him, him uh, uh, threatening not to leave power. Him just threatening. You see, that's fascism. He has he done it. Has he done it? He hasn't right. done it. This is you this is just a pumped up threat yeah. so you're you have a list of yeah. of of pumped up threats that he's making versus tangible things that joe biden is doing i this mean they is are, the thing they that are i was trying to point out go ahead go ahead, go ahead go ahead they don't like they are fascists through and through they are telling you guys even this election they are tripling down fuck double they are telling you we are straight up fascists we are so so much fascist we believe in fascism so much we're not even gonna run our fucking primaries we're not even gonna play that whole fucking game anymore we're gonna show you guys who has the power and who's gonna fucking keep it who's the fucking boss that's what the democratic party is doing right now and dr cornell west he has flaws yes this is why it is good to have somebody to your left to you to, uh, to actually you know uh, push these ideas to you and teach you listen i know he's a smart man but he still have to listen and learn he still have a lot to learn throughout his years that he's going to be here, you know, and it's a lot that he needs to learn, especially when it comes to class, especially when it comes to poor black folk. Let's keep it real. Dr. Cornell West is not a poor man. He's not speaking from, you know, a poor black man uh, uh, train, of, train of thought, right? Because you only hear this type of shit from some rich black dude. <laughs> You only hear this type of shit from a rich black dude. Yeah. Well, I wish, he, 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 need, he needs he needs people to his, to the left of him to educate him on, on on these things and how to really strategize on uh, uh, getting the working class to back you to back a third party. Anyway, let's continue. Let's we still got quite a bit to get through, so let's. I'm gonna let it play for quite a bit and then we can comment because I want to hear what Doctor West says and and we, we dive in after. It could be black people, Jews, Arabs, and so forth. See, with, with, under Biden, what you have is a fascist dimension domestically, especially against black folk and others. You and I, the very fact that we're having this dialogue without being eliminated overnight, a fascist regime could completely call into question with, 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 with the use of arbitrary power. That's what happens in the mass incarceration regime vis-a-vis -vis poor black people and others, right? So that is the fascist dimension. And, Similarly and, so in terms of militarism abroad. So that there's fascist elements, my brother, fascist dimensions. But with Trump, when you have calling in the question transfer of power and so forth, that is not the same thing. And so that, that doesn't undermine my campaign at all. The campaign's about truth. 100% undermines your campaign. 100%. You're shooting no yourself way. right in the dick no before way. you even start. So not that's just all. bad. You're getting bad advice. I don't know who's advising you, but they're it's giving you horrible advice. advice. I'm January, myself. I'm a free man. I'm a free man, okay. brother. I'm so January, man. but I want to hear your argument. I want to hear your argument as to how Biden is more fascist than Trump. He, you know, why you? Why do you need to hear that? Are, are you really going to make a fool out of yourself in front of fifteen thousand people <laughs> when we told you this three plus times? Literally three different members. You had me, you had CJ, you had Savvy. You had, we told you this. Do you, were you daydreaming when we was telling you this? But instead of listening to what we said, you are gonna make an ass of yourself instead of in front of 15,000 people. You can because literally look at when, the, the I, I remember when Savvy out. interviewed you, when Savvy interviewed you and she gave her a brilliant reason why Joe Biden's faster than Trump. When I talked to you, when I told you why Joe Biden is just as bad as Trump, your response was, you guys bring up great arguments. I'm going to pray on that. Apparently, you did not. That's why I feel insulted. Because we tell you this stuff. It's like one ear at the other. That's just, it's extremely frustrating. Because now we got to watch you. We got to watch this extremely awkward, tense, 
moment that probably lost you a ton of support, to be honest, because you just didn't listen to us for whatever reason. All you have to do is say both men are bad. Jesus. Just run to the left. That's And it's so crazy how, how low the bar actually is. That you can just be somewhat better. You are better. We, you don't have a political report card like Joe Biden or Donald Trump. You haven't you've been into politics, but you've never been into power. Okay. You don't have a record of bombing people and shit like that, but you do have a record of endorsing people who do who do those things. All you have to do is say, fuck both of these niggas. Both of these motherfuckers are, are, are white supremacists. Yes. Both of these motherfuckers are fascists. We're not going to compare apples to oranges or green oranges to red orange, what, <laughs> red apples to, to uh, green apples. These are both apples, <laughs> you know? So he, he just needs to say, fuck all of them. Like, like y'all said, scorch earth, run to the left of both of them. And you will have the, uh, uh, you will have the working class. You will have the people here at least. At least you, you yeah. know that you have the balls to call out both parties when it this actually is, comes down to the needy greedy because we need a leader who's going to who's gonna be able to stand up on his feet and die on his feet when the time comes for it. I was just going to say, this is the piece that Bernie Sanders was missing. This is the piece that his campaigns were missing because even at the end, Bernie said, well, we got to vote for Joe. We got to vote for Hillary so that we don't get get Donald Trump, even Bernie Sanders wasn't willing to point out the similarities between Donald Trump and uh, Joe Biden. And I think it just, because again, this is this is something I, I just, I've recently asked Bree on Bad Faith. I said, what is the end game? Is the end game to try to reform a party or work outside the system? Or is the end game to tell people in the end when you don't get the nomination because the DNC is going to give it to you, is the end game to tell people just support the Democratic Party because they're not Donald Trump? Because if the end game is to tell people just support the Democratic Party because they're not Donald Trump, we're not going to get any significant changes in this country. We'll just keep doing the same thing over and over. So you really got to if we're in the ring, if Cornell West is in the ring, he got to knock Joe Biden the fuck out. <laughs> like seriously you can't tiptoe around it you can't be nice about it you have to take joe biden down and i felt like bernie wasn't really willing to do this a number of times when bernie sanders could have called out joe biden on the debate stage even that one-on-one -on -one debate that they had bernie still even then was soft on joe biden he could have went way harder at joe biden so again it's like we have to knock joe biden out period Absolutely. And to add to Savvy's point, um, you know, uh, Dr. Cornell West can really go for the juggler because as a black man going to prisons to teach uh, black men in prison, I think that Dr. Cornell West has a prime opportunity because he literally can go from the left and say, look, this is all the things that Joe Biden did. And Joe Biden is no different than Trump. And here's the thing. Yes, some people who are on the more Trump voter side are going to get pissed off. But the thing is, is that once you juxtapose, not juxtapose, but once you show the similarities that Trump is just like Joe Biden, then it's going to make even people on the right think, well, whoa, mm. why is mm. Trump acting like Biden? Because the thing is, is that the point is to turn off right wingers to Trump and to turn off liberals to Biden. And so that they can both see, look, it, 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 the math ain't mathing when it comes to supporting <laughs> either one of them. And another point that I also want to bring out is uh, the point is we want to make sure that they realize you're workers and that's it and that's all. And both of these guys both support the people at the top. You can say, well, Joe, uh, Donald Trump didn't support war. Yeah, but at the same time, who gave tax cuts to all the, uh, all the billionaires? right and then who is continuing those tax cuts there's really no there's really no distance there's no gulf between them right and so i think right. that's the thing that dr west needs to hone in on yeah i know there's a lot more to say but let's let, let allow mm -hmm. the clip to play and then we can uh chime in some more i uh, some more thoughts trump just, 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 let, just lay it out right quick well um, i'll tell you right now tr the reason why the the deep state russia gated trump 
was because uh, he wouldn't bomb enough to calm them down. So he wouldn't do enough bombing. The reason they impeached him because he wouldn't ship arms to, na to Nazis in Ukraine. And he was against that. Uh, so that's the that's so a, just, are you are you defending Trump as somehow being a, a person who is. So, I, mean, I don't understand. I don't understand your argument at this point, though, man. What, what are we talking about? OK, are we talking so about? Uh, there's. So what I, what I think Dr. West should have said there instead of saying, are you defending Trump? He should have pushed back on the rhetoric that Donald Trump didn't send weapons to people. He did send weapons to Ukraine. I can continue to say that over yeah. and over again so people understand that. You guys can Google this for yourself. Donald Trump still sent weapons to Ukraine. And I think that's what Cornell West should have pushed back on instead of, are you defending Trump or that type of thing? Yeah, great point, Savvy. I'll go back a little bit. I, I won't, let, this, this exchange is going to be tough to get through, fam. Let's, let, let's, I'm exchange, gonna, I'm gonna let, let's finish this exchange and let's just do our thoughts afterwards because it's going to be, wow. That response, right? Wow. It, so I didn't, I, I didn't he, see the whole thing, but that's wow. It was against that. Uh, so that's the. That's so the just, are, you, are you defending Trump as somehow being a, a person who is. I, mean, so, I don't understand. I don't understand your argument at this point, though, man. What, what are we talking about? Okay. What are we talking so about? Uh, there's. I, mean, I, 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 I want to understand what the content of your argument is because one can, in fact, Okay. Bring critique to bear on the system as a whole with the two corporate wings, but somehow, what do you say to but, what do you say to trans and gays and, and, and lesbian brothers and sisters in terms of their rights? So uh, that's ex again. Uh, is, is the, that, Joe Joe Biden is responsible for the mass incarceration, not Donald Trump. Who who is more responsible for black and brown people lock, being locked up and America being the largest penal colony in the world? Is it Donald Trump or would it be Joe Biden? By the way, this conversation is a loser for your campaign. Donald Trump sitting, well, no, sitting I, here I, trying I to make the argument. It could be a loser for you too. Though, <laughs> trying to make it, trying it, to make it, the argument. No, you trying to make the case that somehow the, <laughs> is, the, the, the Democrats are more fascist than the Republicans. The, the, the fascism cuts across the board. Is, but, that, but that, that's but not how you say it, though. You say it's only man. Donald Trump. You don't say it cuts oh, across no, the board. No, no, you call no, Joe no. Biden milk toast and you I call Donald Trump a fascist. So you're not saying Donald Joe Biden is a fa fascist, really? I, I said there's fascist dimensions to the to the Biden project. You're absolutely right. It's but like you're campaigning is, for Joe Biden almost when you're doing this. Oh, that's what no, it sounds that, like. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But that's what it's, I'm not saying you are doing that. I'm saying that's what it sounds that's like. What it sounds like to you. That's what it sounds like okay. to you. And you got a right to be wrong. You got a right to be right. It sounds like to you. Now, I must, there's a lot to break down there. So I'll be real quick and I'll pass it. There's a lot to say. But I'm going to say it like this. Do Dr. West, Howie Hawkins, or anyone else, if I truly believed that Donald Trump was more fascist than Joe Biden, I would vote for Joe Biden. You guys know what I mean? I would never do that because I generally do not believe that. I, I legitimately believe that Joe Biden is the most efficient fascist in government. He got things done that Donald Trump couldn't do. Like he's he funding I six billion dollars more than Donald Trump, right? So if I generally believed that Donald Trump was this unique threat that was more fascist than Joe Biden, I would just be a Democrat. I'm not because that's ridiculous, right? So when you even let that hint out, even if you're not campaigning for Biden, that is the conclusion that some people will reach. Yeah, man, I like Dr. Cornell West. I like everything you just said. But yeah, you did make a good point about how Donald Trump is more fascist than Biden. So unfortunately, I got to vote for Joe Biden now, right? So that's the issue. And that's the same thing I told you on our show. Also, Nick, I just want to add, like, the focus here of them going back and forth and talking about who's worse, Trump or Biden, to me, it's just like you're running outside the two-party system. So I don't even understand why they're comparing Trump and Biden. Does, does that make mm. sense? It's, it's like, a, it's yeah. irrelevant. It's, why, a, it's like, irrelevant to the whole compare? thing when, when the whole show should have been about policy. How do he plan on uh, uh, getting these things done? You're talking about ending NATO. You're talking about reparations. These are some yeah. huge things to touch on. And to go back and forth about, you know, saying who's who's bad and who's worse, and all of it is irrelevant because we need to crush capitalism at the end of the fucking day. We're gonna need a third, fourth, fifth party at the end of the day, you know. But all of this shit, I feel personally, 
is irrelevant because of the times that we're living in, because you know of the minds that we need to capture in, in, in these moments. And talking about Trump versus Biden, who gives a fuck? Nobody, nobody really cares about these people. They are just highlighted because of the media. But the majority of the country don't vote. 70% of Democrats don't want Joe Biden. Nobody really like, like, come on, man. The majority of this country just don't give a fuck about it. You think I want to wake up and talk about some Trump versus Biden bullshit? No. That shit is irrelevant. It's irrelevant because we need to crush capitalism, which is going to put both of them out of power. Whether you like like or hate them, either or more or less. Right. right so the whole it, the whole lesser two evils thing. It just to me, I'm just like, why? Why is there so much focus? What we're like 13 minutes into this interview. Why is there so much focus on who's worse or who's better, Trump or Biden, when the focus should be about the campaign at hand and the mm -hmm. policies that are part of the campaign? And I feel like that piece was lost from the interview because there was so much back and forth about who's worse, yeah. Biden or Trump. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly if, wouldn't go ahead, JB. Even after JB, we can continue the video after JB chimes in. Go ahead, JB. Yeah. I wouldn't even even ask that question about uh, Biden or Trump. I would have had this conversation over the phone, uh, honestly, because the thing is, is that if you're trying to highlight Dr. Cornell West's campaign, it's to highlight the policy positions that he has and the prescription uh, for the American people so that we can go, you know what, this is a guy that's better. Because once you highlight the policy positions, then look, who was... Who was soft on Bernie Sanders as far as his policy positions? People who voted for Trump actually like Bernie Sanders. And so if you have somebody who has policies that are even better than what Bernie would do, then it's great to highlight those policies and then have this conversation in the background behind closed doors or over the phone and say, listen, doc. I, I understand that you want to talk about this, but I think and let you guys have that argument in the background but highlight the policies in the foreground so that it actually shows people, okay, this is what he stands on. And then maybe just then, you know, Dr. West will take that to heart, hopefully, you know, because if it's coming from enough people and then he, he changes and he, and he readjusts on that. But I think this is a conversation that should have been in the background. Yeah. So uh, let's play some more of the clip. Um, man, there's, there's so much to discuss here, but let, I'll let it play for a quiet. Oh, so you call Donald Trump a fascist. So you're not saying Donald Joe Biden is a fa fascist, really? I, I said there's fascist dimensions to the to the Biden project. You're absolutely right. It's but like you're campaigning is, for Joe Biden almost when you're doing this. Oh, that's what no, it sounds that's, like. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But that's what it's, I'm not saying you are doing that. I'm saying that's what it sounds that's like. What it sounds like to you. That's what it sounds like okay. to you. And you got a right to be wrong. You got a right to be right. It sounds like to you. But it doesn't sound like that to a whole host of others at all, Joe so, Biden. Not okay. At all. all right. Again, I'm at saying all. this out of love for you because I do I have a deep love for you. I, I have deep it. respect for you. And we agree on almost everything except the message of your campaign. Right. That's the only thing I, I, I would hope it would uh, become even more folk. Well, let me just put it this but, way. But, but are you suggesting that the message should be that Biden is a greater fascist than Trump? Is no, that what you're saying? I, no, I, I'm not saying that you should talk about fascism or any of that stuff. I think you should. No, fascism is very real. I think you, you should. Think fascism is real in the country. It's we're living in it. We're living in fascism. But I'm talking about escalating in terms of intensity. You, you know, it has the, since since Biden became president. It certainly has escalated in intensity. They've censored everybody. They've crushed unions. They've tried. They've started another war. And now they're saber rattling with. I think look at Cornell West's face. And after what he just said and Joe Biden and Jimmy's response, this is maybe the most recognizable point where you can see in his face, he literally thinks Trump is worse. He believes what most of mainstream media is saying about Trump. Cornel West believes that. He's in spaces I would say 80% of the spaces he's in have people who are still supporting because that's his class supports them. His class that are left, just think about that. People of his class that are on the left are supporting Democrats. So he's picking up on their narrative. 
And because he just said, because he said something, and then and then uh 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 he's like escalating. That's all liberal cable news talk. Don't you think it's escalating? Who's escalating? Who's saying it's escalating? Liberal media is saying the right wing yeah. is what's escalating. Yeah. So yeah, we Jimmy, have to have a realization that where we are in the understanding of Trump and Biden and Trump and Biden, Cornell West is not there. So maybe the question should be instead of saying called Biden a neo fascist, why don't you just stop calling Trump a neo fascist? Because you can use other names <laughs> besides that. Maybe that's the, the way to kind of solve this. Go ahead, Nick. You were gonna chime in. And and once again, this is the problem why, and this is what make Dr. West look bad. And I hope he reconsider his messaging because we are not telling him to lie, Dr. West. I'm not telling you to lie to people. We broke down why Biden's worse than Trump. Savvy broke down to you why Biden's worse than Trump. CJ did the same. Now Jimmy doing it again. And it would be different if you will if you took each point one by one to debunk it. But that's not what you're doing. You're just repeating faith based, yeah. faith based liberal dogma. Like you're not dismantling. It'd be one thing if I said if I list all the reasons why Biden is worse than Trump or just as bad as Trump, and then you just dismantle me and Jimmy. That is not what you're doing. You just say, "Oh, what you're saying is ridiculous." The same thing that like a liberal would say to our in, in response to what we're saying. It, it'd be different. Anyway, I'll let you continue. But it'd be different if you. Just Ajamu dismantle. said this too. Remember yeah. in our interview, Nick, he said, "Yeah, Ajamu tells me this same thing." So Ajamu. People in his circle of networks that's advising him tells him this exact same thing. Not necessarily, you know, uh, that go easy on Trump, but that what are you talking about? Joe Biden's a fascist too. Yeah, he says this to him. But go that's ahead. Exactly, yeah. the video. Anyway, I love video. Let, 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 Escalating let. in terms of intensity. You, you know, it has the, since since Biden became president. It certainly has escalated in intensity. They've censored everybody. They've crushed unions. They've tried. They've started another war, and now they're saber rattling with two nuclear powers. I don't know how what they. I don't know how worse it could get. And by the way, he still hasn't let people out of prison. He still hasn't given student loan. He's still denying us health care. He doesn't. He's an enemy of the worker and a tool of military industrial complex in Wall Street. There's no bigger fascist in the country than Joe Biden. The reason why black around people are locked up again isn't because of Trump. It's because of brother Biden. And Joe Biden is a, is proud of that. He brags about that. He brags about the crime bill, and he will never apologize for it. So I'm just letting you know that I really want. Want your campaign to pick up traction this is the opposite way to do it who's ever advising you sounds like an infiltrator but but, but but why you keep saying advising i'm thinking for myself but i'm a okay i don't mean to insult man. you that's not, a, a, not just a question of advising. okay i don't, I don't know who's advising you you think yourself. You're a, you a free man too, aren't you? Uh, you're right. You're right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I was trying to put it in a language? nice way. You I was, use that kind of language, my brother. You want to be respectful? I'm trying to be respectful. That's what was that. I think you should listen to the advice of Jama Brock of Cornell. I'm sorry. If you're not being advised, you need to listen to the advice of Jama Brock. The movement doesn't need ego. Now, I made arguments and we had discussions about the benefits of a leader, a, a movement with a leader or a leaderless movement. One of the cons of having a movement based around a leader is that if the leader have a bad idea, the entire ship is going down. Yeah, That's why people are upset, Dr. Cornel West, because if you're the leader of this movement and you're saying that Biden is better than Trump, the entire ship is going to go down. If a in, in a leaderless movement, you would be listening to our advice. You would be seeking counsel instead of making this about ego, to be honest with you. And I, I wanted to say, you know, with Dr. West saying that, you know, uh, <laughs> Man, it, this dude, I don't know. I I I I'll save him, man, because I don't got. It's just yeah, like, yeah. We, we continue in Rome. You can yeah, chime in. Uh, you can chime in after we continue some more if you want to chime yeah. in after. Let's play like three minutes straight. Uh, let's see yeah. if we can play. Yeah, three yeah let's play a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Let's play three let's minutes play straight. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah, job. Okay. I know it look like hard sometimes, but I, I appreciate. It. But we just have disagreements it's, on these things. Again, I, undermining. If I undermine the campaign for you. Then you free to have your own view and vision. Okay. And people are free to listen. Okay. To you and be persuaded or not. And okay. I've got mine. I'm listening for your insight. Absolutely right. No doubt about that. 
So let me just say this. So the point of running a third party campaign is is uh, to offer an alternative to the two major parties to bring together disaffected members of those parties, along with independents and others who feel alienated from the political system as it exists. And and the best way to do this is by running on economic issues that unite us, but which neither major party is willing to address because they're both beholden to the same powerful corporate interests. The Democratic Party long ago abandoned the working class in favor of beating the drum on cultural issues. And now that's all the Democrats have to run on. So if voters are looking for a party running on trans rights and calling Donald Trump and his supporters white supremacists, they can already vote for Democrats. The role of a third party is to focus not on the identity politics that divide us, but on core economic issues that unite us along class lines mm -hmm. like Christian Smalls did at Staten Island. Do you think he, he led with LGBTQ trans rights and white supremacy? Or do you think he organized along class lines? He was in That's here, what he we have to do. Yeah, so there's a lot of say, oh, we, we, we have to. We I'm going to go smoke a I'm going to oh, need to go hit yeah, my hold, 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 for, hold on. So we have to. We have to reach out to Jimmy, or maybe he says it more in an interview. Because to be frank with you, I haven't even watched this entire interview. I maybe watched the first half of it. So unless he clarifies in a, later in the, we this is where we have to ask Jimmy: Are you talking about a person who's running for office? And let's say the person is running on an economic campaign. You're telling me in an interview he can't talk about other stuff that he believes in, like if he believes in. Reparation. Is that what Jimmy's saying? I personally don't think that's what Jimmy's saying. I think he's saying as a campaign strategy, it shouldn't be um, here's my 10 point plan, defund the police. You know what I mean? The 10 point plan should all be centered around economic issues, is what he's saying. And of course, the people will understand that you have other ideas in other areas. But the strategy of the campaign. It's these economic uh, uh, demands right here. This is the strategy of the campaign. Now, if I'm in an interview and you ask me about reparations, yeah, I'm for reparations. Are you for trans rights? Yeah, I'm for trans rights. But is that your campaign strategy is what I think Jimmy is uh, uh, alluding to because it is absolutely ridiculous for anyone, including Jimmy, to think that a person who's running for office can't talk about other issues that they believe in outside of their campaign platform. You get what I'm saying? That would be just outside of the bounds of reality, in my opinion. So that's the that's sort of the framing I was looking at this is that, yeah. of course, Jimmy can't not be thinking it the this ridiculous way. But go ahead, uh, Nick. Or yeah, JB, let's, or um, let, I, let, I'll play the clip. I want to hear. Let's get some more context and then we get everyone back in here. I, I, have, I have some words, but I want I want the video to play first. Gotcha, I gotcha. This is this is one of the few parts I did see. So I will I'll let it finish now. Chime in a little. That's along class lines, like Christian Smalls did at Staten Island. Do you think he he led with LGBTQ trans rights and white supremacy, or do you think he organized along class lines? That's what we have to do. You have to organize, meet people where they are. That's a, so. What is your plan to organize along class lines, or are you going to keep talking about white supremacy and all those identity politics, which are there not from the ground up, from the top down, to make sure we stay divided what is your plan to organize along class lines see where i disagree with the question from jimmy is the premise because i wouldn't even classify dr corno west as one of these people that just dive into liberal identity politics so the question framing is kind of off and that's why dr corno west kind of get offended later because dr corno west is talking about working class issues he's talking about ending the war he's against the war in ukraine brother Jimmy, he's against the war in Ukraine. He's been speaking out against Cop City. So he's talk so he is talking about class issues. He's not one of these liberals that lead with identity politics issues. So that's why Dr. Cornell West, you see, is gonna get offended because I think Jimmy 100 percent misclassified who Dr. Cornell West is right here. Because Dr. Cornell West is not the kind of person that just lead with identity politics, Democrat nonsense. Yeah. He talks about ending the wars. He talks about ending the police state. And he talks about ending capitalism. So honestly, Jimmy got off the wrong foot at the beginning here. You're going to see the, the conversation. Well, is, go, go well, ahead, I go agree ahead. with that assessment. Go ahead, JB. I, I mean, uh, go ahead, Savvy. I agree with that assessment. Go ahead, Savvy. 
Yeah, it's it's also on Dr. West's website. Like if you want to see yeah. where he stands in reference to the policies, that's that's on the campaign website. But yeah, that's that's a good point. And I think that as many Cornell West interviews I've seen since he's announced that he's running for yeah. office, he doesn't lead with those things. I and mean, even when that's we've cool. interviewed him, he doesn't lead with those things. Yeah, so, that's why we, it's so we must say that's this. We we must say this is that um even our white allies like Jimmy, um, I would say is not in the place when it comes to racial issues that we would like. So him classifying a discussion of white supremacy or the white power structure as identity politics is simply wrong. Yeah. That's not identity politics. So I don't, so to your point, Nick and Sabby, both of you were making this point. This is one of the things where I was like, yeah, this this is not this exchange here. I'm not so sure Jimmy's right because the question is is put off. So I don't know yeah, if Jimmy why, is just yeah. do, using shorthand. You get what I'm saying? He's using shorthand, like instead of making a distinction. Okay, not talking about white supremacy is identity politics, but I'm just saying, I, you, you get what I'm saying? He's not saying that in a conversation. He's just kind of listing things, but it makes it seem that's what he's doing. So I would just like to yeah, get some more that's, clarification. And, and that's why, and I'm gonna let the clip continue here, but that's why you guys see this. It goes sideways real fast here because, like, if I was Dr. West, I'll be like, nigga. Are you talking? Are you talking to me? Who the fuck are you talking to? Like, like you had uh Jimmy, you had Dr. West on your show quite a few times, man. Like, when when has Dr. Corner West ever been this uh this fucking guy who only talk about divisive identity politics issues instead of talking about war and other economics? And that's why Dr. Corner West kind of got offended here. Uh, but anyway, let's continue so you guys see what happened next. Well, I appreciate it again the clarity and candor. Of what you have to say, we have profound disagreements, brother. When I when I when I organized around white supremacy. I'm not making some utilitarian calculation. I'm speaking as a black man who comes out of a tradition that's been terrorized and traumatized by white elites. And that it, that does not in any way mean it takes me away from class issues. Class issues are crucial. Trans, class issues are fundamental. But it doesn't mean that I'm putting up with white supremacy. One of the problems is that you get too many folk who want to talk class, 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 and can't say my mumbling word about White supremacy, police brutality, uh -huh. can't say a mumbling word hardly. Or when they do uh -huh. say it, you call it identity politics as if it's not connected to class. I'm hitting these head on. Mm -hmm. I'm standing with the workers when it comes to strikes. I'm standing with the workers when it comes to greedy bosses. I'm so Dr. Corner West said he's standing with the workers. So why why is Jimmy upset here? So why does Dr. Corner West standing with the workers and being right on policy? Is that a race? Because he disagrees with you on race? So you're you some some white allies are willing to break class solidarity because we have a different analysis of society than you. So this is the part where Dr. Corner West is one hundred percent right. And, I, and I it's like kind of what we discussed on, on earlier before. But go ahead, go ahead, I, I, I would like to point out a, a punchline from a rapper named Crooked Eye, and he has he had explained he has said some see abortion as brutality, but don't care if the police leave me a corpse or a casualty, and that is. The white left right now, like they do when it comes to class, 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 they, they love RBN. Are oh, we talking about all coming together and whatnot? But when we're talking about black issues, oh, 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 wow, oh, don't talk about race. Why, fuck, why the fuck not? How can I not talk about crushing capitalism? Like, that's not directly linked to white supremacy. What you guys don't want to hear is that you're benefiting. From white supremacy, like every other motherfucker before you have done, and you might not be benefiting, be benefiting from it like your grandfather did, but you, you damn sure are, are are doing better than what we are doing these days. And comparisons, even in comparisons, if I walk around my hood or or, or walk around Michigan with my guns and my boys, we all got our guns out, and a white militia is doing it at the same time, who's gonna get stopped first? Who's gonna get their rights violated first? How do we not talk about race when it when it comes to capitalism? Yeah, this isn't guess, some this isn't some. Oh, look, you a fucking racist. No, the system is racist, and if you feel some type of way about us saying something about it, then maybe you still feel some type of way in your fucking heart. Maybe you still a fucking racist in your heart, and all that leftist perfume that you spray on yourself cannot cover up the shit. 
That's you really are. That's a really good point there, Rome and Nick. I just want to add, I think when some people here put um connect with people by class first, and then you can talk about the other issues. What I've noticed, and particularly online, people are actually saying, don't talk about race at all. And there is a difference between, we talk about what the Black Panthers did. Yes, they organized along class lines, but the Black Panthers were not willing to work with the young patriots until they denounced their racism. And not everybody stayed. And we, we got to be clear about that. Some people left the Black Panthers when this coalition happened, and some people left the, the Young Patriots because they were not willing to do that, and they did not want to organize with a different group of people. So it wasn't all roses around here. But what I'm saying is you really cannot separate the two. And I, I'll give you a perfect example. What we saw happen, or what we just heard about happen in Jacksonville, Florida, the Black people who were killed at the Dollar General. The black people that were killed in the church in South Carolina, the black people that were killed at the supermarket in Buffalo, New York, that had nothing to do with class and 100 percent to do with race. You see why we can't separate the two. There are certain things that are going to that happen to us that we have to deal with as black people. And even when you get into the intersectionality of it, there are certain things that Nick and CJ and Rome and, and JB have to deal with as black men that I don't have to deal with as a black woman and vice versa. You see what I mean? When black men get pulled over by the police, are they being pulled because of their class or because they're black? So these are things that you need to think about. And no, you cannot to sit up there and say, like when people say, guys, don't talk about race, just talk about class. No, bullshit. <laughs> you either in solidarity with me for both or you not in solidarity with me at all. Because when the racial shit happened, a lot of times the people who get on board with us for class, when the racial shit happened, they disappear. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. I remember being out there with CJ and I was trying to you know, go around and do what I do. And I'm talking to this conservative dude about, he mad because he can't get his guns. It's hard to get your guns. I said, you know why it's hard to get your guns? Because y'all motherfuckers didn't speak up. When they was doing that shit to the black people, when they, when they, the only reason why it's hard for you motherfuckers to get y'all guns in California now is because of the Black Panther Party. You didn't speak up. Now we all oppressed. Yeah, one so, of the things that I wanted to bring up, and a lot of times people, uh, can I can I share this tweet really quick? When you look at the polls regarding health outcomes, housing, education, criminal justice, food insecurity, and jobs. Who fares the worst in these categories? They're all class issues. Race equals class. When you talk to black people, when you talk about the disparities between us, when it comes to things like health outcomes, who fares the worst in our healthcare system? Black people. Okay. Black who women. fares the worst within housing when it comes to race? Black people. Who fares the worst when it comes to education? Black people who fares the worst when uh, criminal justice. And here's the thing. Uh, when we talk about class, right? How many black people can actually vote and how many people who are black can actually who are actually uh, in prison? 40 percent of the prison population is black, even though we are only 13 percent of the population. And then on top of that. Them. They're not convicted, JB. Don't leave out that because the white people, the white people love, love to say that motherfucking bullshit. Don't leave out that most of these people are not convicted of a fucking crime. They are just there. That's true. And and and, and the exoner to add to your point, the exoneration rate is actually the highest among black people. But my point is, is that all these black people that have records, guess what? It locks them out of getting better jobs, which is a class issue. And then on top of it, because they have convictions on their record, they can't vote. So then that's another class issue. And then a, a lot of us are still locked away, which means it's a class issue for our families. So that provider's no longer there. So when we talk about race and class, and by the way, by the way, Sabby, Nick, Rome, Jay, uh, Sabby, Nick, Rome, and Sabby, and CJ, I'm sorry. How did we get here? How did our ancestors get here in the first place? 
Why is it because they just hated black people? No, it was class because they saw a, a, a group of people that they can bring over and say, hey, we're going to have these people work, work for free as chattel. And they kept us in a second class position this entire time. And you can say, well, you know, we've had the Civil War. We had the Civil Rights era. The thing is, is that the work is not done. It is not done. Because we're so, still second class citizens. And especially when you look at the institutional racism, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about just people riding around in white hoods and stuff like that. No, we're talking about the institutional biases that still exist today, especially when it comes to jobs, education, healthcare, and all the like. 